everybody, it's Jackie, and today I'm setting up a new watercolor palette, and I thought maybe you guys would want to do this with me, so I thought I'd share it here. Um, so this is my very first watercolor palette I ever owned. It's a Winsor Newton like pocket sketch box, I think it's called. It's just adorable, and I've been using it for a year, and I love it, but um, I'm finding as a creative journaler, I'm not so into mixing colors, and so I'd like to have more shades, but I'm satisfied with the quality of the Winsor Newton Cotman colors. I know there's lots of fancy brands out there, but I really am loving these, so I thought, you know, the price point's good. Why don't I keep going with it? Um, so I decided to go bigger, and so I got myself a new palette, and I got this off of eBay or AliExpress or one of these sites, and it was really cheap, and um, it opens just like the Jane Davenport ones do or the Prima ones do and it has room for 24 colors inside so um, I'm going to be setting up a 24 color palette so while I was waiting for this to come from China I was basically just picking up a couple watercolors here and there um, it also came with all of the half pans that I need oh it didn't come with it but they were like an extra two dollars to add them in so I've got those and while I was waiting for it, I started picking up all of the um, watercolors I would need. So I just every time I went to Desairs, I'd pick up a couple. They're $4.50 a tube. And I put them in this Ipsy bag. And here's what I've got. Paints, paints, paints. Love it. So all kinds of pretty colors. All oh, these ones are PBO ones. So I'll take those out. And uh, this is my gouache, which is what I use for white. It's also Winsor Newton. Um, and it's not going to go in the palette because my understanding is that gouache does not sit in palettes well, but I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I had to get the jumbo size of the yellow ochre. It's all they had, but everything else I got in the little tubes. And so then the question is, how do I set up a palette from this mess? Because I didn't count them while I was buying them. I just, every time I went in, I got a couple nice colors and um, it turns out I bought 29. That's too many. So now what do I do? So what I did was I actually sat down and I swatched them all. And you can see I don't have them all. There is a mistake on this that I just want you to be aware of um, in case you're looking for colors and trying to make color selections. This is not cadmium red. This is cadmium red pale. I just put it in the wrong box. Um, so some of these were colors that I already had in the palette. And some of these ones are new ones that I picked up. And so I just went through. They make 40 in total. I haven't bought them all. I didn't buy any that I thought were too close to what... I had, like I find the permanent rose and the rose matter are very similar, so I just got one of them. I find the cadmium red and the cadmium red pale are very similar. Um, so I didn't buy them all. Uh, I didn't buy white. And, um, and um, so I just went through and anything that I thought was too duplicate, I'm leaving out. So I just had to eliminate five. So I decided I'm not going to use raw umber, mauve, um, hooker's green light, emerald, or... I think there was a fifth one here somewhere. Turquoise. So, and I'm going to use the rest of them, and they're all going to go on my palette. This was written using um, a Winsor Newton um, watercolor marker. And um, so that's what we're going to start with. So then the next thing I did is I prepped a piece of watercolor paper. And it's tiny, tiny writing, but I wrote in all the colors that I'm going to have. And I'm going to do a swatch sheet, and then this will fit nicely in the top of my palette. So it's gonna be a little bit of a tedious process. Um, so I think we'll probably go through the first one together. And then um, after that, I'll speed up the video. So we'll start with uh, lemon yellow hue is actually already in the palette. So, and I think cadmium yellow is also, yeah, cadmium yellow is also. So the first one I'm gonna do is gamboge, which is just this brilliant shade of yellow. So let's move some of this stuff over. <laughs> Um, basically all there is to it is I've got my Sharpie. Actually, before I get too far into this, I'm going to mask off, I think, the areas in my card. So, um, cause I want to, I don't want the colors to blend in their small spots. So I've got this little roll of washi tape and I'm just going to mask it off. So I'm just going to speed it up for a second and then we'll come back and we'll do the gamboge. So the general consensus seems to be that you guys prefer voiceovers in my videos rather than music, which suits me fine because I don't know how to do the music anyway. Um, but here I am just using masking tape. This is just like the thinnest washi tape I had in my stash that I didn't love and just uh, masked off all the different, like the lines I'd drawn to divide the sections. And then since lemon yellow and cadmium yellow are already in my old palette, 
I just use those to um, do my swatches. And then uh, I'll switch to the gamboge, and it's a really simple process. I basically just open the tube, put some in the pan. Um, I had tried tapping this one down to get it to spread out, but it turns out you don't need to. They will spread out on their own, and tapping them doesn't help anyway. <laughs> the sides of the pans, they're just little half pans. They're quite small, so I just um, kind of abbreviate where I can. I just put WN for Windsor Newton on the side, and then just gamboge because that word fits. <laughs> for a lot of them, I have to abbreviate like Hooker's Deep Green or whatever. I had to do a lot of abbreviating. <laughs> And then I just um, pop out the pans that are in my palette, and I put them in the new palette. And um, they are a smidge smaller. Um, the Winsor Newton one pans are a little bit smaller than the the, uh, the generic brand ones that I got from AliExpress. But I am finding them interchangeable. So the, the new ones I got, even though they're a little bigger, they do go back into the Winsor Newton palette if I ever decide I want to downsize for... Um, travel if I want to go down to fewer colors and move back into that one I can they just don't fit in quite as snug but they still um, they don't wiggle around in there so I think it's fine so I thought I'd just um, talk a little bit about how what my goals were with choosing the colors for this palette um, I basically needed colors to do two things the first thing is that um, I just wanted to have pretty colors that I could get at easily in the case of wanting to do a quick background in my journal. Um, so for that I picked really bright lovely colors like orange and pink and, and some beautiful shades of blues and greens. Um, then I also wanted to make sure I had uh, realistic colors for when I'm drawing from life or painting from life which is something I want to do more often. So that's why I included colors like sap green, um, Payne's gray for shadowing and um, then I also wanted good mixing colors for when I am actually doing some serious painting um, I need to be able to mix colors so that's why I added in things like yellow ochre and burnt sienna so overall I think 24 colors is more than what I needed but um, I had the space so I used it and I, I think it's just going to make my life a little bit easier not having to mix all these colors um, so yeah, I'm just really happy with it. The um, paper that I'm swatching on is just um, 200 series Strathmore watercolor paper. It's nothing fancy because generally when I'm using my watercolors, it's in my journal. My journal is on sketchbook paper, so um, I thought I'd probably get the truest representation by using a lower quality paper. I don't think the the, the brilliance of the colors is really coming through on the video. Um, I think my lights aren't bright enough. But I did. I do find these these paints to be nicely saturated or nicely pigmented, and I find the colors to be nice and brilliant. So I'm satisfied with those. Um, I have tried fancier brands like at um, Deseris. They sell the Daniel Smith dot sheets. Uh, I think they're fifteen dollars, and you get three or four sheets. They're eight and a half by eleven, and they come with tons of paint samples on them. And I've tried those, and I have to say, he has some incredibly beautiful colors. Um, that I would love to um, start collecting, but I think for my basic palette, it's a little bit overkill for me and what I do. Um, so at this point, I'm swatching the Cobalt Blue and Ultramarine, and what I found that I didn't find in my first swatch test is that I cannot tell the difference between the colors. They look identical to me, so I was a little bit frustrated by that. Um, and so what I ended up doing, and you'll see in the picture at the end of the video, is I replaced the cobalt blue for turquoise um, which is uh, quite different from ultramarine which was much better for me um, so yeah I think that's pretty much um, the main things I wanted to tell you about this palette the other thing I'll mention is that I do have another video on my channel if you haven't seen it already that is talking about how I'm learning to watercolor because I am a total novice at this um, I'm a big fan of free resources, so I've, um, in, I'll link to that video below, and um, you can um, find out the kind of resources I've been using and the steps I've been taking to learn. Um, I'm just having so much fun with it. It's my favorite medium this year. Um, I'm just so hooked on watercolor. Uh, the other thing I'll include below is um, a list of all the colors that I chose. I tried to make sure I, I, I picked cool and warm versions of yellow and red and blue. 
in green um, so that I can mix them well. But I'll put the whole list below in case you're thinking about setting up your own Kottman palette. Yeah, it's, um, it's coming along. I think it's been about three or four days since I set up this palette initially and um, the paints still haven't dried all the way like the the tops of them are dry to the touch but they still have like a squishiness to them it takes a it takes quite a few days for it to um, cure completely solid so I'm just uh, waiting for that I wasn't sure if I was going to add a black to this palette um, because I'm not sure that black is the color I really want in my painting and um, I'm just so in love with Payne's Gray. Um, it's so perfect for doing all kinds of shadows and that sort of thing. But I had a spot in it, so I um, so I didn't end up including black. There's actually, I think if I squished the paints together, I could probably fit in one more in each row, but I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that. I kind of like the way it is. It's balanced right now with 24 colors. So this is the last one. You can see me finishing up my... Uh, my swatch sheet and then I'll just, I didn't even really wait for it to dry before I started peeling off the tapes because some of them already were. You can see my Windsor Newton, my old palette's empty um, except for white and um, then I'm just peeling off all the tape and uh, that's always my favorite part. I love how straight the lines are when you, uh, when you watercolor around masking tape. I managed to stick my finger in the wet sepia paint so there's a big, um, fingerprint in there so I just go in and I just clean it up with a little bit more paint and um, so now I'll just show you the finished swatch sheet you can see all the colors um, they'll be listed below if um, if there's any that you miss but yeah I think they just look great such a nice beautiful range of colors and um, just pop that back into my palette and we're good to go so there'll be a picture at the end that you can see it and I um, just want to thank everybody for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I hope maybe this helps somebody. And um, keep on creating. Thank you so much for watching.